There are three incredibly important stats in Diablo Immortal that affects your performance. They are movement speed, damage buffs, and critical hit chance. Unfortunately, the mechanics behind how these three stats work is very poorly explained within the game itself. And this is because Blizzard didn't provide us with any kind of tooltip or documentation that explains these mechanics. To make things worse, this game is riddled with bad translations and inconsistent use of terminology. The purpose of this video is to provide you with some explanation on how each of these stats work, what stacks and what doesn't, so that next time you come up with a build, you can make the most informed decision. There will be three sections, and I'll leave the timestamps below. Section 1 is on damage boosts. This is the longest section because I did the most rigorous testing for this one. Section 2 will be on movement speed buffs. This one I will simply summarize another YouTuber's test results, and I'll share a link to his much more detailed and rigorous testing video uh, down below. Section 3 will be on critical hit chance. This one will be the least rigorous because I'm unable to thoroughly test this due to limitations. Um, this third section will be based on things that I've read on Reddit over time. Section 1, Damage Boost. There are many different sources of damage boost in this game. Some of them are within our control based on the decisions that we make. These include your skill choice, your essences, your set items, and your legendary gems. Some sources that are not within our control, at least not on a daily basis, include your faction bonus, your batch of valor, and the results of a Vigil of Blades. To ensure a controlled environment for this test, I've removed all of my legendary gear and my gems, except for the ones that matter. Here I have the Whirling Strike Essence that boosts my damage by 19%. I also have this Skewer Essence that da uh, increases my damage by 19%. I have the Whirling Strike Essence that turns the Whirling Strike into a dash and produces a, a bleeding effect. This is going to come in handy later on when we test Gloom Guides and Banquet of Eyes. And I have another main hand weapon which I will need later on, uh, socketed with a Bottled Hope. I had to put in a non-offensive auxiliary gem because I didn't want Bottle Hope to trigger during some of my earlier tests, but I wanted to maintain the same resonance so that my damage stat is not affected. Here on the other side, I have one piece of Gloom Guides, one piece of Banquet. I will complete those sets for later tests. For now, I just have a placeholder, a pair of gloves and necklace, just so that uh, I can maintain the same stats. I was very careful to make sure that the strength stats between the gears that I'm planning to swap is very close to the same, so that my damage is not affected. This was a huge pain in the butt to set up. I actually had to record this video twice, because the first time I did this, uh, unbeknownst to me, there was a magical property in one of the pieces that I used that messed up all of my numbers. And it is this annoying little property right here. Um, this actually works on the test dummy when the test dummy's life is below 30%, and my numbers all became different, and I didn't know why, and it took me <laughs> over an hour to figure this out and then re-record everything again. So uh, please, if you like this content, if you find it useful, leave me a like and a subscribe. Uh, that'll give me the motivation to keep making these. We'll start off with our baseline, which is our primary attack with no other buffs. So you can see here, it's 14,100 damage, which is rounded down to 14,000. Next, we're going to test the damage boost from our essences. As you can see here, the Whirling Strike Helm Essence gives us 19% damage boost. And the Skewer Offhand Essence also gives us a 19% damage boost. Now I will use both skills at the same time. But this is where the inconsistency comes in. It has the same buff name, but it has a different buff icon, and it has a different buff description. 
will start the damage test with Skewer. As you can see, it is roughly 16,800 damage. Next, we'll do Whirling Strike. As you can see, the damage is the same, as both buffs provide 19% damage increase. And now we will do both. And we have the same damage. Now this proves that the essences do not stack. Next, we test Bottled Hope. Here, we're going to remove the Blessing of the Worthy Auxiliary Gem. To trigger Bottled Hope without our essences, we'll use Transfusion. The damage here is 16,500, which makes sense because Bottled Hope only boosts damage by 17%, while the essences boosts by 19%, so it makes sense that the Bottled Hope will be a little less. Let's disable Bottled Hope for our test on set items. We'll start with the two-piece Gloom Guides. I try to keep the strength attribute relatively similar so that the damage is not affected. Transfusion also has a dash component, so we can use that to trigger Gloom Guides as well. There we go, a non-crit, 16,100 damage. We'll round that down to 16,000. By this point, we also know that Banquet will give us 16,000 damage because the 15% damage boost is the same as Gloom's. So for our next test, we're going to do both Gloom Guides and Banquet together to see if those damage stacks. If they don't stack, it'll be 16,000 damage, and if they do stack, we can expect about 18,000 damage. The essences that I've selected for Whirling Strike is going to give us both the Banquet and the Gloom Guide bonuses. However, we do have to get rid of this essence to not get the 19% boost, convoluting our test results. And there you go, 18,000 damage, proving beyond any doubt that set items do in fact stack, while essences do not. Now we will test to see if Bottled Hope stacks with the two sets. I will use Whirling Strike to trigger both of the sets and Transfusion to trigger the Bottle Hope. As you can see, the Bottle Hope's damage increase stacks with both of the set items. Now it's finally time to add them all up. And there you have it, empirical proof that essences legendary gems, and set items all stack. Except, essences that provide active buffs do not stack with one another. What I mean by active buffs is any kind of a buff that is triggered by a condition results in an icon below your character portrait and it has a finite duration. That is an active buff, such as the one that came from Whirling Strike and Skewer. Essences that provide passive buffs will still stack. For example, like this one, Kuro Vendetta, which gives you a 38% damage boost to Shadow's Edge. Now this is not an active buff, it is a passive buff. These will always stack. Passive buffs do not result in an icon uh, next to your character portrait, and they do not have a duration. And here is the final test. 32,000 damage. This is the 25.2k damage plus the additional 38% increase from the Shadow's Edge Essence. Section 2, Movement Speed Boosts. This one will be a very short section, as I'm simply going to summarize what another YouTube content creator has already done. He has done a very good job testing the mechanics of movement speed. I'll provide a link to his video below. Similar to the essences that I discussed earlier, movement speed bonuses fall into passive and active categories. An active buff comes from any skill, essence, or set that provides you with, with a buff icon below your character portrait and it comes with a trigger condition and a finite duration. 
Examples of active buffs include set items like two-piece Ishtars, skills such as the Necro's Wraith form or the Barbarian's Sprint, legendary gems such as the movement speed bonus from Bottled Hope. Passive speed bonuses come from any source on your gear, character, or paragon that does not have a finite duration and is not triggered and does not result in an icon below your character portrait. Examples include the blue magical properties that is part of your set items, or legendary gems like Blood Soaked Jade, or from one of the Warband Room bonuses. These passive movement speed bonus has a maximum cap of 20%, so going over this cap would be wasted investment. Active speed buffs, on the other hand, are not capped, but they don't stack. Only the most powerful speed boosts will be applied. As an example, if you are a barbarian that uses the sprint buff, and you also use the two-piece Ishtars, the two-piece Ishtar's speed bonus will never be applied, thus wasting your set slots. And last but not least, size matters. The physical size of your character actually influences your movement speed. If you use the Warband Remnant that increases the size of your character, you will actually move faster, roughly 15% faster. The popular YouTuber and monk player Sonshini has tested this in detail. I personally believe that this is a design flaw or even just a bug, but that's how it works today. Section 3, Crit Chance. This is going to be the least supported section of the three. The statements I'm about to make come from either crowd wisdom from Reddit, some anecdotal observations that I have made, or simply conjuncture. To test this properly, I needed buff skills and essences from multiple classes. And I don't have all of them. And as we know with essences, there's no way to know how long it would take for me to farm them. Broadly speaking, crit chance falls into the same two categories as movement speed. You have passive bonuses and active bonuses. Passive crit bonuses stack. There aren't too many sources of passive crit chance bonuses though. Primarily they come from your weapon and armor. I believe some legendary gems like Berserker's Eye adds a couple of percent of crit. And lately, the pet's traits also adds crit, but I don't know how that really works. My assumption is that any traits from pets will be considered passive crit bonuses, which will stack. During my testing, I found crit chance to be very confusing, and the behavior highly inconsistent. For this first test, I'm studying the Gloom Guide's four-piece crit bonus. As you can see here, my base crit rate is 8%. Gloom Guide's adds 22.5%. You would think that 22.5 plus 8 would give us 30.5% crit. But it doesn't. Mathematically speaking, that 22.5% from Gloom Guides was applied to the remaining 92% crit that I'm missing and then added on to the original 8%. The weird thing is, legendary gems like Mother's Lament do not behave the same way. You can see that Mother's Lament has triggered and our total crit chance is 40%, which is the 8% base plus the 32% from Mother's Lament. So the crit chance bonus from this legendary gem is added on to the 8%, whereas the Gloom Guide's 22.5% boost is not added on but multiplied. And now I would trigger both at the same time. And as you can see, only the most powerful active buff takes effect. Spoiler alert, this is actually not true. Alright, this next test was quite difficult to do. I'm wearing 4-piece Banquet and 4-piece Glooms. I wanted to see if set items uh, crit bonuses stack. So my base crit with all my gear equipped is 26%. So as you can see here, I have 10 stacks of Banquet and Gloom Guides active. 
Total crit chance is now 57%. So from my original 26%, I got 31% extra crit. There is no way a 25% boost from Banquets and a 22% boost from Gloom Guides would result in a 31% boost in crit rate. This problem has stumped me for an entire evening before I realized that I got an extra 6% crit from the Helicory boss relics. And now the math makes sense. I got 31% crit, which is made up of 25% from Banquet and 6% from the Helicory relics. This test has proven that set item crit bonuses do not stack. Let's summarize what we have found. In the second test, we prove that when there are two sets providing crit boosts, the higher one takes effect. In the first test, we've proven that between a legendary gem and a set bonus, also the higher one takes effect. So in this final final test, I'm wearing Mother's Lament as well as Gloom Guides as well as Banquet. But look at this, I got 91.5% crit chance when Mother's Lament, Gloom Guides, and Banquet all procced. But we have just proven in other tests that these things do not stack. On top of that, even if you were to add the 32% from a Mother's Lament onto the 57% from the previous tests with the two set items, you still don't get to 91.5%. That number makes absolutely no sense to me. 57% plus 32% is 89%. Where did the other 2.5% crit come from? And mind you, these numbers are already including the Helicory relics that I missed the first time. My hypothesis is that the Mother's Lament is actually stacking with Banquet's bonuses, but is not stacking with Gloom Guide's bonuses. And I don't know why it would be that way. If any of you have any insights into this problem, please leave them a comment below. But for now, this video is getting a little too long, so I will end it here. Once again, this video took a lot of effort to make. Thank you for watching. If you appreciate the content, please leave a like and subscribe.